Liam Lawford was just two weeks away from his final exams when he was, in his words, kicked out of school. I went to Merriweather High School for my senior years, but I didn't actually graduate. So I spent the early years of my adulthood guarding the doors of some of Newcastle's finest establishments. (laughs) It's a pretty tough town to be a bouncer. (laughs) Oh, nah, it's all a facade, I think. (laughs) I loved every minute of it, but I realised that it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I made the move to Queensland to attend TAFE and get like my high school equivalency, at which I was able to gain entry to the University of Queensland's Commerce, uh, Bachelor of Commerce degree. So that's what I did. Liam had designs on being a doctor, but a TAFE teacher named Kay had other ideas. I hated maths. I dropped maths as soon as I possibly could. And then going to TAFE, they were like, oh, maths is a requirement. You have to do it. My TAFE teacher made me fall in love with maths. I would talk to her about, oh, yeah, I think I want to be a doctor. And she's like, "Uh, I don't know if you are a doctor. (laughs) And I was sort of taken aback initially, but she really sold it to me. And the way that she taught and just sort of like supported me in something that I thought I was rubbish at. I thought, well, maybe she knows what she's talking about, so I'll I'll give it a crack. And she did. (laughs) Liam grew up in the New South Wales Hunter Valley, coal country. So my country, I'm a Wiradjuri and Anawa man, but I was raised on Awabakal country in Newcastle. It's the steel city, BHP, and I feel pretty privileged to be able to live in the place called home and still work for BHP and have all that history around me. I remember... In my mum's old house downstairs, there were steel beams that were used to support it, and on the steel beams, BHP was printed, and I thought that was pretty special. From dreams of medicine to finance to mining, the catalyst for Liam's change of path was a couple of philanthropists, Don and Shelley Argent, who offered him a scholarship for the first year of uni. Don was the ex-CFO of a contracting company called Tease, and Shelley is one of our country's leading human rights activists. They would invite me over to dinner and talk about my life and where I've come from and talk about their life and the things that they'd experienced. And it was Don who said to me, have you ever thought about mining? Liam started reading about the giant projects Tees had worked on, including Snowy Hydro and giant coal and dam projects. And as chance would have it, next year a scholarship became available that was the AIF BHP Tertiary Scholarship, and it just felt like fate. The AIEF is the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation. It's an organisation very close to our hearts here at The Australian, and today it's celebrating 15 years of transforming lives. AIEF raises public, corporate and government funds to send young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to the nation's most elite and expensive boarding schools and, like Liam, to tertiary study. Liam's scholarship included a summer internship with BHP, which became full-time work, and then he got terrible news. At the end of my second year of uni, my mum was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer. It was awful, and it was at at a time in my life where everything was sort of going well, and then just suddenly it wasn't. So it was just before I started my internship at BHP and she strongly encouraged me to continue with that. And the one good outcome of COVID was that I was able to relocate back to Newcastle and still work from home. So I'm able to spend more time with her. But at the end of the day, would I have continued to study and continue to work and the rest of it if it weren't for the support of AIF and the comfort they were affording me and the security? The answer is no. I say this to Andrew and Michelle all the time, I wouldn't be where I am without you. And they said, it's all you, mate. But uh, it isn't all me. AIF had a huge part to play in that. Liam's mum died shortly after he graduated from uni. But I look back on it now and my proudest moment is the day I finished my final exam and I was having a cup of tea at the kitchen table with my mum. And that is thanks to AIF. Liam's 29 now, and he works as a specialist in Indigenous engagement for BHP at its Mount Arthur open-cut coal mine near Musselbrook in the Hunter. He deals with the delicate and layered relationships with traditional owners, contractors, 
suppliers and employees. I feel honoured to say that I work for BHP. When I, I tell people what I do, they're taken aback. They could, they're often unaware that uh, a position like mine even exists. The importance of Indigenous relationships with the resources sector is huge because mines have a, a, a massive lifespan. So quite often you'll be dealing with the same people for quite a long time and at the end of the day, once the mine is gone, those traditional owners are still going to be there. So the importance of nurturing and ensuring opportunity with the relationship that you have with traditional owners is, is just integral into the way that we work. Coming up after the break, a young woman who's following her rock and roll dad's example and raising her voice. The Australian subscribers have known about the AIEF for 15 years and today you can help their work by donating at aief.com.au and while you're at it, become the kind of person who's always the first to know by subscribing to theaustralian.com.au. We'll be back after this break. We need to listen to our people and acknowledge that the system has failed our children, our siblings and our cousins. What you're hearing is a speech given in 2022 by Shakira Garlett Pinky. She was in Year 9 at Adelaide's private girls' school, Seymour College, when she won the Say public speaking competition for her impassioned argument on the incarceration of young people, including many of the kids she grew up with. Who will put a 10-year-old into a prison thinking it was a solution? When really, every situation facing a child in their actions has a beginning, has a reason and has an explanation. It's not a bad way to kick off your first year at a new school. In 2022, when the COVID-19 pandemic was raging, Shakira accepted a scholarship to study at Seymour College from the Australian Indigenous Education Foundation. Boarding school was an adjustment for Shakira, but to say she's thriving would be an understatement. It took a lot of rehearsing to finally say in the speech without messing up, but when I stepped on that stage, it's like all my fears sort of just went away. I was in, like, the zone. And especially, like, when you're talking about something that comes from the heart and it's something that you're very passionate about, your passion sort of overtakes your fears. So I feel like because I was talking about such an important topic, it made me less anxious to speak on stage. Shakira grew up in the northern suburbs of Adelaide and her mob are the Baladong and Miraning people. It's here that she saw the effects of juvenile incarceration up close. I know a lot of kids around in my area that get in trouble with the law a lot and, like, with speaking about this issue, I knew that I had to do it because it was very, very personal and I, I see it quite often. There's still more than a year before Shakira sits her final school exams, but she's already thinking about the future. She's interested in criminology or forensic psychology at uni. Ever since I was young, I was really fascinated by, like, crime and um, the justice system. And obviously growing up with a lot of my family and family friends being in jail and struggling with their mental health, as I grew up and since I came to Seymour College, it definitely made me realise that I want to make a change. I want my career to impact and give back to people in my community. Shakira's dad, Russell, is a musician. He's played in Adelaide band The Merge for decades. guitar and the drums and it's always been a really big part of like my family and my life. We've always sort of bonded over music. My other hobby is definitely art. I love painting 
that's also been very, very important and a very special way for my family to connect to our culture. Wherever she lands, Shakar is grateful for the opportunities the AIEF scholarship has opened up. It's definitely made a really big impact. I feel like I definitely wouldn't be here right now. I wouldn't have the confidence that I have right now if I didn't come here. It has given me so many opportunities to voice my opinions and to express myself. Yeah, and boarding. Boarding has been really good as well. I've made a lot, like I've made so many friends and I've learned a lot of skills as well, especially living away from home. I've learned to be more independent, learned to manage things a lot better, like balance school life and my personal life. The Australian Indigenous Education Foundation will celebrate its 15th anniversary with a special event in Canberra today. And don't forget, you can support them too at aief.com.au. The Australian has the best workplace journo in the country, Ewan Hannan, and today he's breaking news about a landmark deal between unions and workers to deliver a 26% pay rise over four years and dramatically improved conditions. It's the first multi-employer agreement in the private sector under Labor's bold new industrial laws. To find out more, subscribe at theaustralian.com.au.